For today's Grim Adventure, we find ourselves in Edinburgh, Scotland. We're visiting the Greyfriar Kirkyard here. It's a 400-year-old cemetery that they say is haunted. And it has quite a, a history, especially with the Harry Potter stories. Something we learned about this city when we first got here is that there's so much history here that it, it seems impossible to capture everything. Like, there's so much stuff that we wanted to see, but this cemetery is one place that has been high on our bucket list for quite some time. So much history here in this cemetery in particular. We're going to concentrate mostly on some gravestones from a very, very popular story and movies called Harry Potter. There's a few other things. And get some pictures. Jessica loves taking pictures. Now, baby ghoul, when I say that this place has some ties to the Harry Potter story, I'm not talking about the movies, I'm talking about the books. In fact, the very first book was written in a cafe just down the street from where we are standing right now. Now, this cemetery has a lot of tombstones in it that is said to have inspired the characters in the movie, well, in the story, Harry Potter. Uh, you can find tombstones throughout the entire cemetery that say things like Potter, and Riddle and McGonagall, and we're going to show them all to you. So I read that there is up to eight different character names that can be spotted inside the cemetery. And the first one we're going to go to, of course, is Harry Potter. And it's this giant one over here on the left-hand side of your screen. Also, I read that there's a very good possibility that this cemetery was used for the inspiration for the cemetery in Goblet of Fire, as well as Deathly Hollows. You okay? Yeah, you. Where are we? I've been here before. So, there's a lot of names on here. And I'm not going to touch the stone, but you can see that it says Ann Potter, his wife, daughter of Robert Potter. Since the books were written at a cafe not too far from here. The writer, she would often come in the cemetery, walk through the cemetery and, and just pick names. I'm not sure if it was actually said in an interview or on paper that she got names from here. But once we continue through the tour here and you start looking at some of the other tombstones, it becomes abundantly clear. That was Harry's father's name, James Potter. Right. James and Lily. James and Lily. Mom? Dad? So right there in the center of your screen is the Potter grave. And if you're visiting him, you might as well take a little step over to the right to this one right here. Now the name is slightly off with the spelling, but Bill Nighy's character, who was part of the Ministry of Magic, his name was Rufus. Scrimmager, I think it's how you said it. Here it's Daniel Scrimmager. Man, I'm probably butchering that name. These are dark times, there is no denying. But I say this to our citizenry. But it's another character here in the cemetery where the book was written. The next name we're looking for is Moody from Mad-Eye Moody and walking back to this little entranceway into the next part of the cemetery, you can see that giant building by the center of your screen. That is said to be the inspiration for a lot of what we know about Hogwarts. And in a moment here, you're gonna see a sign on this wall that says Flood and Wall. You know, I was talking about the history of this place. There's so much history. At one point, there was a prison overflow that was built next to this cemetery. Yeah, look at that. As soon as you walk through the archway, look to the right, and there are some tombstones on the wall. And this is where you'll find the name inspiration from Mad-Eye Moody. Here, the real name is Miss Elizabeth Moody. 
there's a silver fence here right now blocking it for some reason but there's the stone I'm here because Dumbledore asked me end of story goodbye the end any questions in the grand scheme of things this place really isn't that big but what a doozy it is the next one we're trying to find is the black family the tomb of the black family Sirius black now here's the fun thing about this Technically, there's two tombstones for the Black family. This one right over here, a little further down the pathway from Moody, is where you'll find this one. And it does have the last name Black on it. A little hard to read. Charles, Francis, another Charles, a couple different Charles, different families here, but there's supposed to be another one that says Sirius's name on it. Now, I'm not really too sure what to make of this. That tombstone right there on the wall is for Sirius Black. Now, I read a couple different things online and research. The first one being that there used to be a stone there that said Sirius Black. And then other accounts say that somebody just came and wrote it there. Now, if we walk closer to it, you can see that a big portion of it is missing. But somebody did write Sirius Black right there. Plate stolen. A lot of graffiti on here, which is really sad. Why would somebody do that? I did my waiting! Twelve years of it! In Azkaban! Peter Pettigrew! And he's in this room! Right now! Come on, come on, Peter! Come on, come on and play! <laughs> This is another gravestone with the character that Bill Nighy plays on it. It's a little hard to make out, but it's right about there. I can't get any closer to it because I'm standing right up against a fence. Maybe this helps a little. It's that plaque right there in the center. Out of all the names here in the cemetery, back here in the corner has to be the coolest because it's the villain. Back here is where you'll find Voldemort's name. Well, Tom Riddle. Welcome, my friend. Thirteen years it's been, and yet here you stand before me. They kind of look like doors, don't they? Like doors into like some sort of dark afterlife. Oh man. How amazing is this? So it's the Riddle family and over here where it says sacred, you can see to the memory of Thomas Riddle. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, baby ghoul. At this point, in life, I think Voldemort is one of the most recognized villains in storytelling. He I mean, who must not be named. Hey, wait, right, yeah, I keep saying his name. Look at me. It's because we're part of the Grimm family. We're all dark and spooky here. But the fact that these names are here in the cemetery just blow me away. Now, this is, this is probably the coolest part, but this is not the last of it. There's more. Behind these gates that Jessica is standing in front of is supposedly the school that inspired Hogwarts. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, but just past this, right before we do that, there's a little walkway that goes to a plaque over here on the wall. It's kind of high up there. Now keep in mind, this is right next to the school. Can you read what it says? The last name? McGonagall. Professor McGonagall. I should have known that you would be here. Professor McGonagall. Good evening, Professor Dumbledore. Well, in real life, it's William. He's a poet and trage tragedian. 
died 2nd of September, 1902, buried near this plot. So let's get our bearings here. Straight ahead on the other side of that church is the entrance to the graveyard here. I'm sorry, the kirkyard. And also over there is the, the cafe where the first Harry Potter book was written. Most of the characters, their names are taken from different tombstones down in this area. And then right over here, just behind Jessica, I'm not gonna point the camera in the gates because it is a school, but this school right here is supposedly the inspiration for Hogwarts. It was never confirmed, but the more you'd dig into it, like supposedly back in the day, I don't know if they still do it, but back in the day, there used to be four different, I wouldn't say houses, maybe like houses, kind of like in Harry Potter, that had colors that were very close to the Harry Potter house colors, like Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and Slytherin. So, makes you wonder, doesn't it? about breathtaking. Now I know that this cemetery has over 400 years of history and we're here mostly talking about Harry Potter. Pretty much since we've been here, countless people have been walking through, tours have been walking through, and every single one of them has been talking about Harry Potter, so it's huge. And I'm not talking tours with maybe like two or three people. We've seen three of them so far that had upwards of 20, and it's the middle of the week at the time that we're visiting this, so. It's pretty wild. And there are multiple staircases that go up and down the hills. It's pretty amazing just walking through this cemetery. I mean, pretty much everywhere you look, there's just something that you've, just makes your jaw hit the ground. You see the skulls? Wow, right? And how about this one here? I just noticed that both bodies on the left and right have no head. Maybe that's because their heads are right there in the center with a skeleton between them. Here's a look at the very top of it. And it's a little, little baby or a cherub sitting there with a, a skull. Jessica's been walking around taking pictures. Now, Baby Ghoul, you've been down by this one for quite some time. What's going on down here? I just feel that if there was going to be a tomb in the cemetery that was like a secret entrance or had a connection to Salazar Slytherin or something like that, it was going to be this one. If you're not familiar with the symbol to medicine, it's two snakes entwined with a staff. But it's a symbol for medicine. I know that it is. But it still... Gives off the a, Slytherin vibes, it right? It does, because along the sides also, they're really worn away, but there's uh, bones, crossbones, with flowers and ribbons, and this just feels serpentine, doesn't it? It does. Like, what's crazy is, I mean, we know that we are in a cemetery that inspired in some way shape or form at least the city inspired one way shape or form the stories but walking through this cemetery it's like walking through the, the books walking through the movies like you can see everything here i kind of want to try to speak parcel tongue but i know i'm going to be really bad at it but it's very <laughs> <laughs> I would have just died if it opened up. <laughs> right. Imaginary <laughs> wand. Make it so. Just walking through, we keep finding ourselves pleasantly surprised. 
wait until you see what's in here. We were walking down the pathway and looked to our left and were greeted with this. Never, never seen anything like this before. This is, it, it, it's insane, truly insane. And right over here, you can see this rotunda. I do believe that this is the, the black tomb. Oh man. Got this right here. You can hear the kids from the school off in the distance. All right, whenever, we need something like this for whenever we die. Stand right in the middle and I'm gonna back up to see how much of this we can actually get all in. Look at that. Now that is soul shaking. Visiting the cemetery, it's not just about the tombstones, the buildings, the surroundings, the environment. Everything is just insanely gorgeous. There's one of those tours that I was just telling you about. It just got started. What a beautiful day for a stroll in the cemetery. We were kind of concerned about coming up here with the weather, like it was gonna to be too cold, but I think it's absolutely perfect. Oh yeah, Jessica's losing her mind with all the leaves. Every time I wonder where she's at, I turn around and there she is. Something else, right? Jessica found a very interesting vantage point. Now we're talking about Harry Potter and right over here, you can see that truck. It says Bell Haven Brewery. And right above that is the Edinburgh Oz Bar. It's a Wizard of Oz Bar. Right above that, you can see the sign that says Harvey's Furniture Store. And behind, right above that, you can see the, the wood, the plywood. Well, there was a bad fire that happened there. That is where the elephant house is. That's where the first Harry Potter was written. And a couple years ago, it caught fire and it's been closed ever since. But you used to be able to go in there and see all kinds of different things and pictures and what have you not. But I think that's about it for our Harry Potter part of the cemetery. So let's spend the rest of the time just walking through, taking a look at everything. When it comes to this city, there really is just way too much history. I wish we can cover it all. I wanna just kind of cram it all in, but also at the same time, you kind of just gotta take your time. Now there's one more thing that I wanna talk about. And I'm sure you've heard of Burke and Hare, the two serial killers that would kill people and take the bodies and give them to science really, it happened here. Another video I wanna do. But also back in the day, Edinburgh had a problem with people digging up corpses, grave diggers, not allowed to be digging up corpses, uh, called, I think they're called reanimators. So there are some cemeteries here in town that have these like watchtowers that they built, but there's also certain places that have what's called mort safes, which are these wrought iron cages over top of graves. There's a few over here. There's a big tour group to the left of your screen. I'm gonna do my best to try to avoid them, let them do their thing. But what I was just telling you about, the mort safes, one of them is right there in front of the screen, right there smack dab in the center. And it looks like a giant prison, right? It looks like it's designed to keep somebody in, but in all actuality, it's designed to keep people from the outside coming in. I called them grave diggers, but what I meant to say was grave robbers. Here's a plaque that talks about what it is. This iron mort safe, I love that, was placed over the grave to prevent grave robbers from digging up the body for sale to the anatomy classes in medical school. Crazy, right? So obviously you have the bars. 
But then if you get really close and you look down, those slabs, they're like concrete slabs that talk about who's buried there. So it has the names on it. A little hard to see. The sun keeps popping up and hiding behind clouds. Is it just me? Or does the tour group kind of look like they're gathering for a funeral, right? It's kind of a haunting image. Right now I'm just waiting for them to move on to the next site because they're right now they're talking about another mort safe that I want to show you guys. All right, so they moved on. So here's a look at the other mort safe that's here inside the cemetery. I'd say it looks a little bit older, but maybe it's just dirtier. Right? Oh yeah, almost forgot about Great Friar Bobby. Basically, this pup here, after his owner died, they buried him inside the cemetery, and he lingered at his grave for years until his time of death. And the city, I'm not sure who it was, commissioned and had this put here on the outside so people can come by, and as you can see, people come by and they rub his nose. We've seen people do it, and that's why it's a, uh, Looking like that. Pretty wild, right? There's even a little pub over here, a little restaurant pub. To be fair, everything that we've talked about today, I don't think has officially gone on record that this was the inspiration for this or this was the inspiration for that. It just all makes sense. It all looks like it and the names, you, I mean, you can't, you can't deny that. Just look at this. It's something else, right? Now, of course, we'd like to come back. We've got more videos planned. We're just doing whatever we can in this, our limited time here. But the Frankenstein bar is right up here on the left-hand side. You might be able to see the Frankenstein banners. Huh, Thistle and Gifts. There's Greyfriars Bobby. Churches pretty much everywhere. Check this out, ready? I'm gonna get out in the street a little bit. Tell me this is not amazing. The world famous Frankenstein. Before we go to Frankenstein for a bite to eat, I wanna point out a few different things. So directly across the street, you see that dark blue right there. You can't read the sign, but that's McGonagall's. It's a little pub over there. But directly across the street, when we were standing in the cemetery, we were pointing out the back of the elephant house. So we were standing, let's see here, right about there. And then you see this building, how it's all boarded up. This is all because of the fire on the left-hand side here. So this floor, you can see the red storefront. This was the elephant house. It's been closed for uh, some time, really. Go ahead and walk over this way. It's crazy how everything here is just melted together, if you will. Huh, birthplace of Harry Potter. Even though it's technically gone, there is a plaque here talking about the history, both with Harry Potter and Ian Rankin. So there's that. When it comes to the inspiration for Diagon Alley, I really believe that they used a lot of different streets. Because pretty much every street that we walk down here looks almost like the movie. Now, right about the center of your screen, you can see that orange uh, building right there. It has a number 40 on it. We're gonna stop there and talk about that. This is probably the busiest store here. It's called Museum Context. And if you look to the left, you see that blue shield plaque there? I don't think it's official, but it's here. And it talks a little bit about what we're making the video on. Tons of people. It's just gonna get worse today. It says, founded in 1873, Robert Kresser's Brush Shop. 
occupied number 40, this building right here, for 131 years. Harry Potter fans believe this magical street gave J.K. Rowling the vision for Diagon Alley. With original Victorian fixtures full of dusty boxes and broomsticks, was this little shop the inspiration for Ollivander's? Usually the store is pretty packed, but not right now, which is a perfect time to take the camera inside. Oh, this is, this is perfect. You having fun in here? There's a couple different floors here. So what do we got here? Mr. H. Potter, the cupboard under the stairs museum. Context, 40 Victoria Street in Edinburgh. So this is a picture of how the shop used to look. Was this say 1873? Up the stairs we go. And to top it all off, there's a whole other floor up here. A little bit of a photo opportunity. This keeps going up. The Chamber of Secrets has been opened. Enemies of the air, beware. Very tight quarters up here, but they have a nice little setup. Basically, you can sit down at the desk. There's some things around you. Oh, that's fun. So we made it to the top. Directly behind Jessica is Edinburgh Castle and behind me is the kingdom, so to speak. We got some amazing views and we're gonna share them with you. We're, again, we're gonna be doing a big video up here. But I can't believe we're here. Like, pinch me now. Pinch me corpse. But really, this is what we came here for. Wow, right? When it comes to places that we visited together because of YouTube, we've, we've seen some pretty amazing stuff. Yes. Things that have made me go, wow. Things that have made you cry. This is the first time ever since I've known you where as soon as you entered the city and you started seeing the buildings and you started seeing the, the closes and the cobblestone and all the stores, you just lit up. Like, what is it about this place? My little squeaky stamping. Right? <laughs> like, like, what do you think it is about this place that just kind of, like, ever since I've known you, you've always talked about coming here. I have, which is interesting because I don't think I have any ancestry here. To my knowledge, I'm Irish and Norwegian, but I've always had a pull to Scotland. I'm not really sure why. What really blows my mind is there's so much history here. So much history. And there are so many people here because of that history, as well as Harry Potter history. Now, I, I know the stories, the books, the movies, they're all fake. It's all imagination. But to a lot of people, it's, it's their life. Now, just imagine, just imagine if the characters in Harry Potter were real. They're buried here. The names.
With that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time to Edinburgh, Scotland, visiting the Greyfriars Kirkyard, a place I've always wanted to go. Spent literally all day here. We thought it was gonna be like an hour or two. It's not that big, but I'm telling you what, we literally spent all day here. Thank you for joining us. And again, until next time, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's come in my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stay? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way.